guys, welcome back to Pop Kids and by Parade. I'm Emma from Emma's Goodies, where I make easy, delicious, comforting treats and desserts. I have been challenged today to recreate an expensive dessert for a lot less with Deluxe versus Deep. It is Valentine's Day soon. I know a lot of people will be buying sweets and treats online, and some of these can be very expensive. I've been challenged today to recreate this cake right here. I think with shipping, this comes to a total of $90. That's a lot of money. So I'm gonna see if I can recreate it for less, and of course, share with you lots of tips along the way. So let's get started, and let's make this. To cut down on time, ingredients, and costs, I'm gonna use cake mix for this video. Believe it or not, this was my first time using cake mix. Up until this point in my life, I had never tried it, and I was shocked how convenient and consistent the results are. You wanna follow the method on the box. However, instead of water, I'm gonna use milk, and instead of oil, I've used half melted butter, half oil. This is optional, but it's a really great way to bump up the texture and flavor of your cake mix. Yes, you can make this cake from complete scratch, but this is deluxe versus dupe. I'm getting flour, cocoa powder, sugar, leavening agents, all in one. So it's a really great shortcut. I'm just gonna give my liquid ingredients a quick mix and add the red velvet cake mix. The full method, along with the ingredient amounts, will be on parade.com. You wanna scrape the bottom and sides of the bowl just to make sure everything is well combined. Now the cake we're recreating today is a six inch, four layer red velvet cake. And one cake mix alone is enough to make a four layer cake. I think that's amazing. If you don't have a scale to divide the batter evenly, you can use an ice cream scoop. It's a great trick to evenly portion out the batter between your cake pans. Make sure they're well buttered, floured, and lined with parchment paper. Obviously, you can use eight inch or nine inch cake pans and just make two layers. You're gonna bake your cakes in a preheated oven at 320 Fahrenheit for about 22 minutes. Do the toothpick test. If it comes out clean, your cakes are ready. Baking the cakes at a slightly lower temperature allows you to have more control over the cakes. They'll be softer and you won't get doming. Set these to the side and allow these to cool completely. Now, instead of using fondant for the hearts, I'm gonna show you a more affordable way to make the decorations. Fondant can be very expensive, so royal icings on decorations are a great alternative. It's just one pasteurized egg white, so it's safe to eat powdered sugar and lemon juice. Super simple and quick. This is the same icing that professionals use to decorate holiday cookies with and make decorations on cakes. You wanna combine these ingredients together. You can use just a simple whisk or a spatula, and you can dye this whatever color you desire. I personally like to use gel food coloring. A little goes a long way. If you're using liquid food coloring, just know that you may need some extra powdered sugar, so keep that in mind. You're going to pop this beautiful icing into a piping bag and pipe some hearts onto some parchment paper. This is where you can really get creative, have fun, and really customize your cake however you want. This is so relaxing. I could make these for hours and have a good time, but that's just the. You want to use a toothpick to shape the hearts, and you do want to make your decorations the day before. So that's the only downside to using, you know, royal icing instead of fondant is that these have to dry out. So you do want to make these in advance. As they harden, they'll also deepen in color. Moving on, we're gonna make the frosting. You can't have red velvet cake without cream cheese frosting. And I'm gonna share with you my secret to making the most perfect cream cheese frosting. You wanna start out with very soft butter to make sure that butter is in fact soft. Just whip it up for a few seconds. Creaming the butter allows you to get rid of any lumps and really make sure the butter is soft and spreadable. Just like this. If you can spread this butter on toast, you got the right consistency. Now I'm gonna use my stand mixer as this is a lot of frosting. The trick to making stiff cream cheese frosting is using cold cream cheese but very soft butter and you'll see why. You want to quickly mix the powdered sugar and cream cheese together for no more than 30 seconds. If you continue to mix this, the cream cheese will start to warm up and we need that cream cheese to remain as cold as possible. I've quickly mixed in some food coloring. Again, I'm using gel and you're going to take that cream softened butter that we whipped before and quickly combine it with the cream cheese. When I say quickly, I mean quickly, okay, as fast as possible. As soon as that softened butter hits that cold cream cheese, it will start to cease. So work fast, add the butter and mix on high immediately. 
Now you don't wanna mix this for too long, okay? So mix on high until this combines and then it's done. That's it. Do not continue to mix this. This will look like buttercream, but it's in fact cream cheese frosting. It's really amazing. A lot of times cream cheese frosting can be runny and loose and you have to refrigerate it before using, not this one. It is silky and smooth, delicious, and you can use this immediately. Okay, so we're ready to assemble our beautiful cake. If your cake has a dome, you wanna trim it off before assembling. Now to speed things along, I like to put the frosting in a piping bag. And what's really cool about this is that it allows you to portion out the frosting for each cake layer. So each cake layer is gonna have the same amount of frosting. Now, because we're making a tall cake here today, what I recommend is sealing the sides of the cake with frosting as you build the cake. This will give structure to the cake as you build it, and it won't be as wobbly. What you can also do is chill your cake layers beforehand. It's easier to frost a chilled cake, especially if it's a tall cake. If it's a two layer cake, you won't really have this issue, but taller cakes need that extra attention. I love how sturdy this cream cheese frosting is. It's got everything you love about cream cheese frosting, including the cream but it's able to hold the weight of a four layer cake. Most cream cheese frostings would not be able to do that. I'm gonna do a crumb coat for this cake. This will lock in the crumbs so the final frosting layer will be smooth and without crumbs. So I did pop my cake in the freezer in between the crumb coat and the final coat. You wanna leave it in the freezer for about 30 minutes. Cream cheese frosting takes a little bit more time to harden than pure buttercream. It won't harden completely like buttercream, but it will harden just enough to lock in those crumbs. When you're doing your final cake layer, you wanna really pack it on. Add as much frosting as you can. Most of it will be taken off anyway and smoothed out. So be generous. I know it seems like a lot of frosting, but again, it will be smoothed out. Now you can really have fun and decorate this so many ways. For this video, I made two different cakes. A dupe one because, you know, that was the challenge. And I think we really nailed it. I love how this turned out. But I also wanted to show you how you can have fun and get creative when you're making anything homemade. This is your cake. You made this cake, so you decorate it however you want. I went with pink hearts, big hearts, cute small hearts. I had a blast. The original cake comes to $69 plus a $20 to $30 shipping fee. In total, that comes to anywhere between $90 to $100. This dupe cake comes to a total of $12, and I had leftover ingredients. You are getting a stunning four-layer cake, and this tastes amazing. This was super moist and delicious. As I said, I was surprised how good cake mix can really be, especially if you bump up the flavors with the milk and the butter. If you're on a budget, this is a great alternative, or maybe you just want to make this yourself, because let's face it, if you put time and love into this, I think that makes any gift much more special. I hope you get to try this cake recipe, and I hope it inspires you to make your own Valentine's Day dessert. Make sure to subscribe to Parade for more videos like this, and check out my channel, Emma's Goodies, for more easy desserts. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.